All right, so I think it's recording. So, hey everyone, this is Geo Will from Life Map Production Squared, and today we're just gonna be talking about um, talking about my first and weak impressions of my Tesla Model S. And um, but what I've found that's interesting, cool things that are kind of messed up, and um, I'll go from there. Double tap to flip the camera. And there we go. Apparently, I have to double tap it in just the right way. So, um, let's go over the bad stuff first because there's less of those, and I uh, want to get that out of the way first. So, first things first, let's talk about this screen. Um, so, some of us, no zoom, okay, zooms in. No, no, no. I guess that's right. So this screen um, will occasionally lock up. I'm not sure why. It only happens in specific situations, though. Um, when I usually, I've only seen it happen when I have the Tesla app connected to the car for enough time and unused for enough time that it asks if I'm still there using it. When I come out to the car after I do that, it seems like the screen is always frozen. Um, it's never happened when I've just had the app connected for a little while or have been using it to turn it off or if I don't connect the app to it at all. Um, it's actually easy to, to like reset it though. You also get a message on the main display that will say that it's frozen. You just need to hold down this spinner and this spinner for uh, together at the same time for a couple of minutes, minutes, a couple of seconds. And that'll kind of reboot the main screen and also the, the uh, center console display. Um, one of the other kind of annoying things is that when I'm using the, the Tesla app, I can now see how hot my car gets sitting out in my works parking lot, and it's like 130 degrees sometimes. So that, that's interesting and kind of annoying. Um, I've tried venting and doing the AC before I get in the car at work, and it works pretty well, actually. Um, though, and sometimes it doesn't work quite as well as I want it to. Um, venting doesn't seem to usually work here in Phoenix, so I'm just basically letting out most of the hot air and most, more hot air comes in after that, so at night it levels it out a bit, but doesn't really cool it down much. I have to turn the AC on in order for it to actually do anything. Um, some other interesting things I didn't know about is this uh, center console thing here. Just push this back in and it'll automatically close. Didn't realize that until um, saw it on a YouTube video. Um, some other annoying things. Um, the I guess impact alerts or whatever the sensors on the side of the car will tell you we're going to hit something. Um, they tend to be go off a lot, and really I understand why they do that. It's because if you're an autopilot and you're driving along, any kind of being less than maybe a foot away from a car is like insane. But when you're going like to pull in someplace to park or um, like in a small garage like this one, um, the sensors just go insane, um, and it, it gets kind of annoying after a while. Also. Normally when I'm backing up or pulling in, I can't use the mirrors because the, I have to fold them in to get the car in. But that's more of a of an aspect of this tiny freaking garage than anything else. Um, let's see. Any other annoyances? Um, not really with the car. Other than that, um, it uh, this color of the the, car, the color that it shows shows hard water spots really freaking well. Um, <laughs> Got to see some over here. Actually, that's on the chrome, but it, it's even more noticeable when it's on the paint, painted sections. Um, so I'd spend a little bit of time with a uh, microfiber towel this weekend, cleaning off all the hard water spots. Um, looking into getting some sort of water, inline water softener for my hose. So that I don't have to deal with that, or maybe finding some sort of, um, in addition, finding some sort of uh, automotive shampoo, soap, foam kind of thing that'll help break up the calcium. Um, so the interesting stuff, um, what's really interesting is watching like the mileage, projected range mileage and things like that when you're driving, um, especially in the five mile because when you let the regenerative braking hit, it like goes like way down. I've seen it actually have the projected range at 999, um, just because of all the regenerative braking that I can do on these roads around here. Um, Overall, though, this seems to be pretty accurate. Um, this whole projected range and um, also the trip. Uh, well, I have to start a trip, so let me see. Go to 
places. Um, hmm. Uh, favorites work. So this is it's pretty accurate to be honest. Um, maybe maybe a percentage or two, plus or minus, but it's usually pretty accurate. Um, in terms of how much power you're going to use when you get to the destination, how much range you have projected. Um, the, you know, like, uh, gunning it and doing a lot of fast acceleration doesn't seem to impact the battery capacity too much. Um, obviously if you're, like, pedal the metal for minutes, it probably would, but in the Model 60, uh, Model 60, it's not going to be too much of a problem because you're not really pulling too much power. Um, on that note, though, another interesting thing about it is that the, um, uh, it feels like it goes 0 to 60 faster than what they say it does. Um, I think it was the day after I got it, I took it out during the night on I went on loop on the loop 101, and just kind of gunned it up a ramp, and it felt like I got to 60 in about two and a half to three seconds. That might just be perceptual kind of differences, but it felt like it was a lot faster than 5.2 seconds. Um, so I'm not sure what that's what that's all about, but. It might be also that since this is the 75 kilowatt battery, that it does go faster than what they say it does for the 60. I don't know. It just feels like it goes faster than that, but it probably doesn't all the time at one of these days. Um, I have not used autopilot yet. Um, frankly, I haven't found. Um, yes, first time. I haven't been able to find the highway being um, empty enough to try it. So I don't want to. I haven't felt comfortable turning it on when there's a bunch of cars around because um, there's that initial time period where things kind of start taking over and when it's really jam-packed on the, you know, the road and really messed up, things can go bad pretty fast. So I haven't felt comfortable doing it yet. I might do it to, either today or tomorrow. I mean, not tomorrow. It depends, I guess. Tomorrow's going to be pretty jam-packed. Um, maybe today, though, because I'm planning to go down uh down south towards um south part of phoenix today so maybe i'll try it today because the road should be pretty empty um though i may not though because i actually want to film the first time i turn it on so i might wait until i get like a match or something i can stick up here and hang my gopro down from um so i'm gonna record it what the hell uh what that um, haven't had to use the horn yet, so I can't comment on that. Some people have had problems with their horns, but I never use a horn pretty much, so. Some people say it's like an abdication of your responsibility as a driver, but to me, horns are just annoying annoyances that, uh, piss people off, so why use them? Um, let's see, any other interesting things, annoyances, bad things? I don't think so. So let's talk about the good things. Um, obviously the car is super quiet when you're driving around. Um, and even people that have, uh, other kinds of supercars like Ferraris and whatnot, sometimes will do a double take. I actually had a motorcycle cop pull up beside me the other day, kind of did a double take over and then gave me a thumbs up. It was an interesting thing. Um, had a couple, uh, people on Ferraris and, uh, um, Mustangs kind of also do uh, some double takes, but um, nothing too much. Um, people say when you get a, a Tesla, people like just come up and accost you and ask you all sorts of questions. That hasn't happened yet, but I don't tend to hang around outside my car when I'm going somewhere and getting out of it, so that might be why. But I don't think I think the Tesla's not quite as new here as it was before. I think there's a, quite a few more of them. In fact, since I've gotten this, I've seen maybe five or six other Teslas on the road. Which is crazy because I usually didn't see mon many of them at all before. But um, I think they're becoming more common out here in Phoenix. Um, I know that in this quarter, at least three or four of them um, were delivered here. Um, uh, that um, were for, for Phoenix. At least that Tesla Motor Clubs. Um, haven't tried the back seats yet. So I don't know, there might be more. I don't think every Tesla owner is part of Tesla Motor Club swarm. Um, 
So let's see, charging. Um, charging is pretty quick. Um, it's not that bad. About three ten. Three ten. Three ten. I think yeah. Um, so I only get 24, 24 amps. So that's like eighteen miles per hour. It's it's still enough to charge overnight though. Usually, well, not usually. It is. Um, the lowest I've charged it from has been about thirty five percent of the capacity left. Um, so that took about eight and a half, no, well, let's call it nine hours, pretty closer to nine hours. Um, so that's not too bad. Um, still need to uh, get APS out here to do the whole Tesla, not Tesla, electric vehicle plan thing, but um, I'll eat the extra cost for a while. So apps, let's talk about apps. There's another annoyance. Um, the um, web browser is horribly slow in at least on the LTE, and I've found that the LTE signal in this car isn't very good, I'm not sure why. Um, it might just be the internals or something, but it seems like my phone gets better LTE service than this car does. Um, and that might be part of the reason why this this internet app doesn't work very well sometimes. It seems very kind of slow and uh, sluggish. It's running a bit better today because I'm hooked up to the Wi-Fi. If I turn off, let's turn off the Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi cancel. I want to do that. I want to go to Wi-Fi. And now the thing's gone. Nice. Okay, there we go. Settings. Um, off. Okay, we're on LTE now. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to refresh. Yeah, now we get this page not available. You can see it's really loading slowly now. Let me hit back. I'll we'll go back to Amazon.com. Amazon. So now you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's like really, really, really slow. Granted, you won't be doing too much, you know, of this when you're driving. But at the same time, um, I had pulled off some place to eat and I was wanting to watch uh, some stuff on Amazon. And it just would not load at all. Um, I also don't know if the car has the correct software to do that though, like Flash or whatever they use. Um, but I was just like not loading at all. I was doing this kind of thing, taking forever um, to load. I'm betting if I hooked up to my phone, it'd probably be, it'd be better reception than if I had it just kind of, um, you know, think it's a Wi Fi. I'm um, not going to do that now though, but you just kind of get the idea, it's really insane. Um, I'm not really sure why that is, but I can connect. see all the, that's uh, the other one other annoyance isn't this screen just fingerprints up like crazy you can already kind of see stuff everywhere so I'd see the the browser and the network stuff is not the car strong suit um, let's see it's been about 25 seconds now it's been connecting takes a while so um, that's one annoyance um, the backup camera it's been pretty it's pretty awesome uh, I've used it for just backing out of parking spaces or even when I'm driving because you can't really see too well out of this back window I don't know if you see if you can see it through there there's not much space because the headrest is getting in the way and then you have the smaller uh, rear, rear view yeah rear view uh, window back there so sometimes I'll use this backup camera to, as when I'm driving to make sure there's nobody coming up. One thing I wish Tesla had had done with this is on the on the on the mirrors have like a uh, like a section that pointed inward more for blind spot detection because what I've found is that these sensors um, 
when they're driving, they don't detect things that are beside you very well, or even at all, really. Um, once they get past the rear bumper and before they get about maybe half a car length in front of the front bumper, the sensors won't pick up any cars. Um, there's no sensors in the side doors like in the, the X. Um, I think that they really need those because uh, part of all the autopilot is the whole, you know, detection of incoming, you know, traffic coming into your lane or going into other lanes, um, lane detection and all that kind of stuff. There needs to be something to detect cars that are beside you like that, or you might not be able to see the, might not be able to see them because the mirrors sometimes don't have the right um, angles for that. But also um, because the sensors, when they're doing autopilot, when they're doing full autopilot, uh, whenever they release it though. Maybe that's going to be part of 2.0, maybe even 3.0, putting sensors in the doors for the Model S, but um, that's something I see. I feel they're going to need before they go full autonomous on these. For the X, I think it's fine because they have those sen those door sensors in the door, so that works that way, but they have to do something similar with the Model S. Um, so, let's see, what else? Um, phone quality... It's okay. It's kind of tinny. Um, I think it's just, it has to deal with the fact that the LTE signal is not that good. Um, but it works. It's passable. Uh, what else do we want to talk about in terms of, let's see. Um, sometimes this screen will be super slow on its own, though. I'm not sure. It might just be because it gets too hot. It, I think it's because it gets really hot. Um, usually when I come out here in the car after work, it's 115, 125, maybe 130 degrees in here. And this screen seems to take a long time to react. Um, it's not very bad right now, um, but sometimes it's just really slow. It takes maybe five to six seconds to just close a screen or bring up something. Um, so this, this screen is not um, immune to the effects of heat on electronics. Um, so another kind of um, annoyance that I found is that um, unless the car is unlocked, um, you won't be able to open the trunk or the, the frunk. Um, not that big a deal, but just kind of annoying sometimes. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, displays, trips. So for the driving experience, um, let me see. What are we at in terms of mileage? I don't even know. So 240. Wow. Well, I did not know that much. I put that much on it already. But so for over the past 240 miles... Um, what I found is that the car is obviously highly drive, highly drivable. Um, it's really a good drive. Um, the handling is really nice. The um, um, it's really awesome to have that instant acceleration. Um, I think I've left a few people more than bewildered when I've pulled out in front of them from a dead stop and they've kind of been going. Um, and uh, just overall feels like really really high quality driving experience obviously um i haven't tried any of the other other settings that in terms of like the handling and whatnot um where is that vehicle i don't even remember where it's at now it's controls driving yeah so I've, I've been on standard i haven't tried comfort or sport yet um that might be something i'll do um i tried to braking i'm starting to get used to it it's actually pretty awesome because if you once you start getting used to it and you start kind of anticipating how much you'll slow down at any given speed, you'll be able to use just the regenerative braking to slow yourself down to the point where you're all, you're basically just going maybe one or two miles an hour and then you can just brake. Um, that's usually really what you need to try and do is that kind of a one pedal driving style so that um, you only have to brake when you're like at a light or a stop sign or something or traffic jam. Um, just so that you don't wear out, you know, you don't use the brake, don't wear the pads out that much. And you get more power back into the car. From regenerative braking, um, for the most part, I found that it doesn't really add too much back into the battery. It's more of reducing your energy consumption while you're driving. Um, so normally when I'm driving, the indicator is usually just either at this line or just above it. Um, when I'm driving just steadily, not accelerating. Um, depending on how hard I'm accelerating, like if I'm going from a dead stop or near dead stop and just punching it, It'll go up to maybe 75 or 100 kilowatts, um, watts an hour per mile, watt hours per mile. Um, and that's just kind of really, it'll just drop back down really quickly. So it's not like you're draining too much of the battery. On the higher performance models though, you probably would be for sure because you're 
have a lot faster acceleration and there's more power being drawn. But normally it's around the two to three watt hours per hour per mile range when I'm driving. So it's not too bad. And there's a lot of hilly terrain, so I'm also usually regenerating between uh, 10 and 50 watt hours per mile when I'm going down the hills and uh, stepping off the accelerator. Um, but in terms of actually charging the battery, it doesn't do that too much. Um, it's more about just reducing the amount of power you're using while driving. Um, so creep mode, I'm kind of conflicted about creep mode. It's awesome, but at the same time, it um, kind of gets a little annoying. Um, for the most part, I've found that if you are stationary for a while, um, creep mode won't engage when you let off the brake. Um, sometimes it does, though. I don't get when it doesn't, doesn't. It's kind of confusing to me. But um, I'm thinking about turning it off because um, I would think that creep mode would use a little more power. It wouldn't be that much more power, but it would use a little more because you're con con constantly going forward, usually. Um, and it's kind of hit and miss as to when it will actually engage or not. So... Actually, I think I will turn off right now. Um, haven't had to use range mode yet, thankfully. Um, but it turns off like... Uh, I think it turns off... I'm not sure if it turns off battery cooling. I know it turns off the AC. I don't think it turns off the battery cooling. Oh, that'd be stupid, I think. Um, but it does turn off a couple things that um, will make your life a living hell in hot, hotter environments like Arizona or California. Um, so unless you absolutely need to turn it on, I would say don't turn it on. Um, traction control, um, haven't had to use that yet either because there's no mud, sand, or, well, maybe sand, but I haven't been doing any off-road driving. I don't know who would be, um, but no snow here down in Phoenix. No mud either because there's no rain. Um, suspension has been really awesome, especially going through drive throughs Um, putting on very high gets you up there near the window, um. So that works. I haven't done the automatic lowering to the low because there's a lot of debris on Phoenix highways, especially on I-17 or on SR-51. So um, trying to minimize damage to the uh, car as much as possible. Um, that would, I think, improve the range. I would get a little bit to go lower to be a better um, um, aerodynamics, better uh, drag coefficient. Um, I've done a few days, a few nights of night driving. The none where the auto high beams engage this, so I can't really speak to that. Um, but it's really interesting the lights coming on on their own. Um, whenever the light levels get low enough. I also haven't we haven't had any rain, so I haven't had the chance to see the auto windshield wipers work. Um, but let me see if I can. So. How do I engage the windshield wiper fluid? Oh yeah, this is supposed to do the fluid. Oh, there we go. So, the window cleans off pretty good. Um, the wipers obviously don't get every little space there, so there's like usually some uh, dirt spots around the edges over here, and also down the side over here. Um, just stuff you have to live with. Um, probably should get out and clean that off before it starts to dry off. Um, but yeah, so that's my my first week impression with the car. Pretty awesome. Um, not really that hard to drive. Not uh, really a hassle for charging, though sometimes the charge port freaks out a bit um, when trying to remove it. But I think it's just because I'm not used to unplugging it yet. And um, there are some minor annoyances here and there, and um, a few things that could be improved. But overall, Car's pretty good. Definitely worth the money. Um, I'd say that if you're in the in the market for a luxury car and you have the money to do so, the Model S would be a pretty good choice. 
Um, especially that uh, now that they've gotten the they've got the uh, higher uh, range batteries coming out from the Gigafactory, and uh, that also start dropping the cost of the battery. So in five to eight years, when I need to replace the battery, the battery will probably cost maybe just ten thousand dollars to replace because. At that point, the Gigafactory and others will have been put up and will be operating at full capacity and really will have really lowered the amount of um, the cost of, uh, eight, of a per kilowatt hour for batteries. Um, I think Elon said recently that the goal for the Gigafactory now is either 100 or 150 gigawatts of capacity. Originally, it was um, 50 kilowatts or gigawatts of capacity. I think he said that's kind of bumping it up by double or triple. Or 50 to 100 percent. Um, well, 50 percent of 50 be 75, so 100 percent to 150 percent. Um, so that should be uh, interesting to see what happens with that. Um, I'm going to predict that by the end of next year we'll have a 200 kilowatt hour, uh, 200 um, kilowatt hour battery for the Model S and X. That's my prediction for the end of next year. We'll see what happens then. Um, I was thinking about waiting for the Model 3, the Model E. Well, 3, I guess it's 3, it's not E. Yeah, don't sue me, Ford. Um, but I'm pretty glad I didn't because, well, one, because I couldn't, but if even if I could, I'm glad I didn't because the Model S is, I think, going to be a lot better in terms of the quality and value retention. I mean, the Model... I think a bird just crapped on my window. Um, the Model 3 is going to be, you know, cheaper in its own right and nice, but at the same time, it's going to be the compact economy version, so it's going to be a lot smaller. It might fit in this garage a bit better, but, um, I mean, even in this car, that's one of the other things, is that getting in and out of this car for me is kind of difficult, because I'm about six feet, a little bit on the larger side, and, um, even though I've, like, gotten, gotten a way to get in and out, figure out a way to do it easily it's um still kind of difficult at times especially when you're coming out after you know the car's been outside for a while pro tip do not touch any of the chrome bits if the car's been sitting outside for an extended period of time i laid my arm accidentally on some of the chrome bits when i was getting around the door when i was getting in a few days ago and i literally had like a mini scar on my arm because it was so freaking hot it actually felt actually smelt my skin burning a bit that's how hot it was. Just like two seconds of contact. So that's a pro tip for you. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> don't make the same mistake. Um, but other than all those things and all the other things uh, included, this car is pretty freaking awesome. Um, happy with the purchase. Um, I probably will eventually uh, upgrade to one of the higher end models. Um, I don't know when that would be. It'd probably be a while for now. Uh, four or five, maybe six years down the road. But, um, we'll see. So, as always, I'll be putting this up on YouTube once I download it. And, um, I'm also going to, uh, I guess I won't put it together with the other videos. Um, it'll just be a separate video thing. Uh, but if you have comments or questions, you can leave them there. And I'll answer them. And, uh, if anybody has any comments or qu ask any questions. Since I've been doing this, so I don't usually pay attention to the tweet feed or whatever comment feed when I'm doing Periscope, so I'll get to those too. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I will see you next time when we'll do the the month. Um, so I'm going to do, a, within the week, I'll do a month, six months, and then a year. Um, impressions, review, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I guess September 26th will be one month. <laughs>